David Bliley is one happy mammal jamma. He's found out firsthand that people actually do win those big woodworking sweepstakes we see from time to time. His workshop is now $9,500 richer since he won the popular woodworking 2015 workshop makeover sweepstakes. I always went to these things and I never win. Frankly, I was beginning to think the whole thing wasn't worth my time, like opening bills or dieting. But if a woodworker from Erie, Pennsylvania can win a shop full of tools, then I can win something too. Do they make a Nobel Prize for woodworking? It's Charles Neal, The Lost Episodes. This weekend only, the woodworking guru is opening up his video vaults and re-releasing a classic DVD from the past. The two-hour production is called Oil Finishes and covers everything you ever wanted to know about oil finishes. I've already ordered my copy, which is going on my bookshelf right next to my Honeymooners Lost episodes. If you're interested in seeing what Charles looked like way back in 2007, you have only one weekend to get yours, then it's bang, zoom. Woodworker's Journal has jumped on the witty t-shirt bandwagon. They've released a line of shirts featuring woodworking slogans submitted by their viewers. The slogans include, I came, I sawed, I conquered. In this world, nothing is certain but death, taxes, and wood movement. And Woodworker's Journal, based in Minnesota for your protection. I think they're good, but not as good as the slogans on the shirts in the Stumpy Nubs shop, including, either you like woodworking or you're wrong, with a shirt this cool who needs pants, and Stumpy Nubs woodworking. I don't get him either. Nobody can shake it like Graham Hayden. The hand tool aficionado has been building and blogging his way through some shaker projects recently, and he says it has reminded him just how far you can go and how much fun you can have. It reminds me of my college years. We pack a bunch of people into the dorm room and spend hours building furniture by hand. Those were some wild days. If you'd like to see just how crazy Graham can get, check out the video of his shaker bench at the link in the show notes. Chris Schwartz is no beefcake. The string bean of a woodworker struggles to bend ash chair arms that many small ladies would make quick work of. So he applies the old brains over brawn technique that he learned from Archimedes. He clamps his form to his bench top and uses the vise to do the bending. It's faster than making a special jig and he doesn't have to go shirtless. Check out his blog if you wonder what the heck I'm talking about. Peter Moore of Oakland, California submitted a great tip to Woodworker's Journal on how to fix a sloppy miter bar. He uses metal foil tape from the HVAC department of the hardware store. He says that it's best to apply a piece of tape all the way down the length rather than just piecing in small strips. And you should trim the tape with a utility knife since the tape will dull your scissors. If your miter gauge is less than accurate, you want to try this one out. You'll find it in the August issue. As you know, we've been testing out the new Portimate PM7000 work center for several weeks now, and it's time to rate it based on quality, performance, and overall value. Our senior tool correspondent, Mustache Mike, is here to fill us in. So, first up is overall quality. How well was it made? It's heavy, um, and not just by weight, it's heavy built. And it was designed to be that way. Where it needs to be heavy, it is. And the legs, which you want good and sturdy, the clamp down to hold the saw or whatever you're putting on it. It's got some plastic, but you know everything today has got a little plastic in, in tools, but it's in areas where you would expect um, plastic to be. And it's got to be sturdy because you're going to haul this thing all over. So it was clearly designed to take some abuse over a long period of time. So I don't see any reason to give it less than five stars for quality. So next up then is performance. Did it do what it was supposed to do? When I first looked at it overall, when we set it all up after you know we unboxed it, um, I was a little skeptical. Many times we get tools in here to look at and they've got switches and bells and whistles all over them. And, and as you start to use these things and test them, you find out half of them either don't work or they don't work as claimed. It was very different with this. Um, they put a lot of time and effort into everything that's on this stand and making sure that everything was going to be uh, practical. It, it's a work station, not just a stand. They got power outlets, there's a place to put your pencil, there's a light, but again, design versatility. It's got a vise where you can hold down things, but when you're not working, it's low profile, it's out of the way. 
Um, the work support extends to seven feet on this stand. There's flip-up stops so you can make repeated cuts, even a lumber storage rack um, underneath. And everything goes on and off uh, real easy. It had an optional router table, but we didn't try that out. So as far as a workstation, there's nothing like it. So five full stars on that. All right, well, our last category is value. Is it worth the price? That's one area where I did a, a, you know, a little double take. It, it is expensive. $329, if you add the router table, um, you're going to be fast approaching $500. But as we've discovered in our reviews over the years, you pay for what you get. They put a lot of time and effort into the design, uh, testing it out. It's well built. It's going to cost. But a little bit of sticker shock, I think, for some of the woodworkers. So for that, we'll just knock one star off. We'll give it four stars. So there you have it, folks. The Portamate PM7000 workstation gets four and two-thirds out of five stars. A very high rating. Yeah, nice piece of equipment. So we've had some time to play with it. Now it's time to give it away. We randomly selected a name from our website and newsletter subscribers, and the winner of the Portamate PM7000 Work Center is Larry Imhoff. Congratulations, Larry. Now we have lots of other tools to give away. And all you have to do to be eligible is to sign up for our newsletter at StumpyDubs.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. you got to do both. Better do it now before you forget, because we'll have another giveaway next week. Well, that about wraps things up for this edition of Behind the Sawdust. Be sure to check out StumpyDubs.com at least once a week, because we're always posting more videos and reviews and all kinds of great stuff. New project plans up over there, too. And you're definitely going to want to check them out. Until then, you can sit back and have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend.